sees and sees. In this video, we are going to talk about the difference between dry and soak seeds. We are going to talk about the different parts of a seed and their functions. We are going to understand the process of growth and development of a seed into a plant. We are also going to learn how plants grow without seeds and how seeds travel and why. First, let us understand what is a seed. A seed is the tiny part of a plant which gives rise to a new plant. Seeds have different shapes, sizes, colors and textures. That is, some may be smooth and some rough to touch. Lentils, peanuts, almonds, black crumb, soya bean, chickpea are some of the seeds we eat. In the lesson Seeds and Seeds, Gopal had soaked four bowls of chana and the next morning he saw that the chanas looked different. Let us now talk about the difference between the dry seeds and the soaked seeds. The dry seeds are hard but the soaked seeds are softer. The dry seeds take a longer time to cook, but the soaked seeds cook faster. The dry seeds do not contain water, but the soaked seeds contain water. The dry seeds are smaller in size, as you can see it here, but the soaked seeds are bigger in size. The seed coat of the dry seeds cannot be taken out, but the seed coat of the soaked seeds can be taken out. The dry seeds will not sprout, whereas the soaked seeds will sprout. The next thing that we are going to learn about are the different parts of the seed and their functions. A seed has the following parts. Number one, the seed coat. It is the outer covering of the seed. It protects the baby plant inside it. The seed leaves or the cotyledons are present inside the seed. They store food for the embryo or the baby plant. They also protect the embryo. The third part of the seed is the embryo or the baby plant. It is present inside the seeds which develops into a new plant. The embryo gives rise to a baby shoot and the root. It absorbs food from the seed leaves to grow till the plant develops its own leaves. Let us now understand what is germination. The growth of a seed into a young plant or a seedling is called germination. In order to germinate or we can say for a seed to grow into a new plant, the seed needs water which helps the seed to swell up so that the embryo or the baby plant can start growing. Warmth which speeds up and improves the process of germination. Air or oxygen which releases energy for the embryo to germinate. Let us now see 
How does a seed grows into a new plant? When conditions are right, the seed starts to take in water. As water is taken in, the seed swells bigger and bigger until the coat splits open. When air gets to the seed, the oxygen in the air helps the plant to burn the food packed and stored in the seed leaves inside the seeds. Burning of the food produces energy which the baby plant uses to grow. A tiny root grows downwards whereas a shoot begins to grow upwards. The shoot develops and reaches towards the light while the root system develops deep in the soil. The seed leaves later become the first leaves of the seedlings when the seed germinates. Tiny leaves sprout at the end of the shoot which later help the plant to make their own food. Do all seeds grow into a baby plant? No, all seeds do not grow into a baby plant. Only the seeds that get enough sunlight, water and oxygen grow into a new plant. Do plants grow without seeds? Yes, some plants grow without seeds. These plants grow from their body parts. A new plant grows from the eyes or the buds present on the potatoes as you can see over here. Same is in the case of ginger. It has nodes and buds present on it from which a new plant grows. The bulb inside the onion also grows into a new plant. Tiny plants grow from the buds on the edge of the biofilm leaf. When these fall on the ground, they grow into a new plant. We can also grow a new plant by cutting the stem of some plants and planting them elsewhere like you can see in the picture on the screen. When the stolen or the runner of the strawberry plant touches the ground, it starts growing into a new plant as you can see here. Let us now talk about wandering seeds or dispersal of seeds. Plants cannot move around. Once they grow, they remain in the same place. But seeds are great travelers. They can reach far and wide. That is, they can move to other places. The scattering of seed for growing away from their parent plant is called dispersal of a seed. There are some natural agents that help in scattering the seed away from the parent plant. Let us now talk about these agents one by one. Seeds are dispersed to other places by natural agents such as wind, water, animals and by the explosion of fruits. Let us now talk about how seeds are dispersed by wind. Seeds that are small in size and light in weight are dispersed by wind. Cotton, madar, seeds, 
are dispersed by wind. They have fine long hair around them so they are easily carried away by the wind. Now let's talk about how seeds are dispersed by water. Seeds of plants growing in water or near water bodies are dispersed by water. These seeds are light in weight and are able to float in water. The spongy fruit of lotus and fibrous outer covering of coconut make them light. This helps a seed to float on water and move to long distances. Many fruits and seeds are spread by animals, birds and humans. Humans and animals eat fruits and throw away their seeds. These grow into a new plant. Squirrels collect nuts and bury them. When the conditions become favorable, these nuts grow into new plants. Birds eat fruits. Sometimes the seeds come out in their droppings undigested. Some seeds get stuck to their beaks while eating fruits. When they rub their beaks, the seeds fall down and later grow into new plants. Explosion of fruits. Pods of some fruits like Peas, beans and balsam burst open or explode when dry, thus scattering their seeds. Burdock plant seeds get stuck on the bodies of animals and are carried to another place. It is because of these seeds that the idea of making Velcro came. Now the question which is in front of us is what would happen if seeds are not dispersed and remain at one place only? Well, if the seeds did not spread out and remained in one place, then all of them would have competed for water and minerals from that small area of earth. As a result, none of the seeds would have got enough nutrition to grow properly. There are some plants which trap and eat insects, frogs and even mice. The pitcher plant is one such plant. The plant has a special smell that attracts insects to it. When the insects lands on the mouth of the plant, it gets trapped and cannot get out. Same is in the case of the Venus fly trap. It also attracts their prey using sweet nectar. Inside the leaves of the Venus fly trap, there are very sensitive tiny hair. The moment the insect's body touches these tiny hair, the leaves snap shut and the insects get trapped inside the Venus fly trap.